coming from a place of, uh, I don't know, hatred or hostility. I don't think, all, obviously, all the majority of sun men are not like this, right? I'm fine. I'm okay with that. But not every sun man is a carjacker, right? But damn near every carjacker is a sun man, dude. And it's okay to say, you know, if it's a fact. I, uh, you know, sometimes I think if it weren't for the fact that, like, people that look like me are portrayed as the the worst, right. like, threat to this country and that, you know, we're all potential, you know, incel mass shooters and, and this kind of thing when, you know, in reality, as, as I mentioned earlier, like, over half of the fucking mass shootings this year, which is the banner year, more than any other year in recent history, oh. um, are, are some people clearly... Yeah. You know, but the, the fact close. is, it's not clear to everybody else. Like, I'd go and I present that, and they say, Well, it's gunman unknown, you know, right. despite the fact that you pull it up, and the first one is gunman unknown, Martin Luther King Street, and the next six right. in a row are gunman unknown. I have right. to admit, and, and that, it's not even close. Well, I have to admit that I was actually, you know, looking at it very closely on the mass shooting tracker, I was disturbed to see how many glider domestic mass shooters there were deleting their entire families this year. Like, yeah, there's a lot of them. Uh, but, way but, more than I expected, but, there, but we there's, know, yeah, we know gladders do that though, right? And they're all domestic situations, but right. there was a lot of them. But they're not. At, nobody else is out there doing that shit in the street. And right. I mean, fucking, what I would tell them is find me a glider who shot four more people, and then nobody, like they, they didn't know who he was by the the, the uh, end of the day, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we, we've known that. The the fact that you just said we've known for years, because we've been here for for years now, right? right. Time is flying, dude. But, um, and, and nothing has changed. Patterns continue to be what they've been. And gliders seem to shoot up their own their own house when they do. You know what I mean? And then right, or, kill or they plan it and do it they at random. It. They might do a fucking manifesto for some reason. Um, But the yeah. sun, the sun words... They're, they're going to go into in, in, into public and just shoot it up recklessly. We're seeing more sudden manifestos like our boy in uh, Houston just now who went and wrote the fucking song on his uh, 10th bail out of prison. But yeah. Are you talking I mean, about like, the rap song? Yeah, the dude who well, killed the guy and then wrote well, about it. Well, yeah, but they, Facebook well, post. Yeah, wrote about well, it. Well, again, but, but again, that's a pattern that the Sun Man, these Sun Words do. They write raps about, the, about this shit, right? Like, yeah, we've definitely seen that. They do it all the fucking time, dude. Like every time you see a fucking a, a son team commit a crazy ass murder, you could almost assume that he has a fucking rap, fucking album, and fucking YouTube that is still on YouTube. But I shit is getting fucking. Um, what's the word they use? Um, he's being fucking um stopped or shadow banned, but demonetized as well. Right, demonetized, but these motherfuckers are talking about shooting other song words, no problem. Yeah, and they get uh, you know, it, it's all backwards, and it's uh, you 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 know you know how black I've had song words tell me that they they're part of a gang, right? Um, and more than one has told me this that they write songs and put them on YouTube so that they could get money to buy guns, dude. <laughs> I shit you not directly funding. The slaughter. Right. Yeah. I shit I shit you not. One of them was and, and, and I gotta I mean look, I, I have I think I have some people's skills, right? One of them was confiding in me. He was telling me that his neighborhood they were struggling because their enemies that they were into it with had guns and they, they didn't have any guns at the moment. So they're really struggling. So they had to get guns. And one way they were they were doing it was uh putting songs on YouTube, dude. And people click on these stupid ass fucking songs. People like that shit, dude. Well, I'm always amazed by the uh, the amount of effort and you know work that uh, some people or you know, some some people will put in to uh, you know obtaining the need the means to kill other some people, like yeah, or or do crime. Fucking, it seems like you know that is like the apex of of the effort in the sun community sometimes. Yeah. But dude, but I, I truly, I, I want to picture the solution. I want to picture the backlash. I want, I want to imagine enough being enough and it actually being enough, right? And the nation mobilizing to address the fucking problem, dude. I can't even picture that. There is no way that 
the gliders would allow it, dude. And I know we could blame the Joe's crew and we could blame whoever fought, but at the end of the day, it's glider men, dude. That yeah, are... I agree. And, and you know, so much of like the municipal level administration in places has been lost to the sun and, you know, it, the things are being changed at such a granular level now in so many places that it's hard to envision it, you know, being able yeah. to go back to the way it was. Right. It's impressive, dude, the rate at, at the rate that glider men are like giving their fucking country away, dude. It's impressive. It makes no They're also sense. just killing themselves. Killing yeah, themselves. Their families. Not, killing their families. They're talking about, oh, I don't want to have kids because X, Y, and Z. It's like, what? You don't want to have kids. Like, like, what are you doing? What's what's going on with them, you know? Yeah, I don't think it's all gliders, but it's a huge no. proportion of them, and it's disturbing. Look, look, a lot of the gliders that I know, right, or some of the gliders that I know, being where I'm at, even considering that, are normal fucking tough guys. They're like, they're normal people. They're not like, they, they don't really talk to me about their politics much, maybe because they see me and they think that I maybe I'm woke. You know, I don't blame them for, for you know, being apprehensive, right? But they look like fucking regular Joe, you know? Um, they don't, they, I, I don't live in an area huh, where you got these gliders dressing like females. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um... <sighs> But, like, look at our White House, you know? Look at, there's so many shining beacons right now that are broadcasting the yeah. completely wrong message. Exactly, dude. You know, and, and that's, you know, some of that may be the Juice Crew, I think, for sure. But Yeah, um, for sure. You know, so much of it is basically our own fault, and fucking ancestors are always going to be at fault for the crime that they committed. Yeah, yeah, I mean, look. But 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 dude, hi, I've been doing a lot of uh, a lot. Of, I, I I like I like history, right? I, I like reading, and I've been reading a lot about history, and uh, I, I'm I'm really on, on, on a part of pre Civil War, right? You should see how conflicted the gliders were about slavery, dude. It was like a it was it was destroying the it it, it led to civil war, dude. The gliders were very conflicted on that issue. You know what I mean? Um. Yeah, I actually like, just finished a bi well, biographies of Hamilton and Washington. And, you know, that that is a, I mean, it's a consideration that doesn't disappear from the very beginning of the country until it erupts into, you know, general warfare, they, right? They were, yes, dude. I, 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 was, I was amazed at the level that the gliders seemed to be so conflicted on this issue of slavery, right? Um, I don't know, man. It, it, it just, I just hate. I feel like I've been lied to, dude. Again, that's part of like the, you know, not being in the matrix. I feel like, you know, this whole notion, you know, that the gliders were just like attacking people. And I'm sure they were, don't get me wrong either, dude. I, I can't imagine they were not, right? But the level that they have drilled in us to believe. Yeah, I mean, it was a, you know, I mean, it's been said many times, but it was a massively small minority of gliders that were, causing this problem whether it was you know i don't know choose crew too maybe i guess bringing uh some people over to the united to the, the americas but i mean they that goes way back places. before yeah whatever like i mean they would they wouldn't have been bringing them there if there wasn't a market for them and that was you know primarily rich gliders in the south for the most part but you know also in the north and like that shit has damned us in so many fucking ways for such a long, you know, it may damn us entirely. Yeah. I, I don't know. Do I, but I think I'm not right. trying to condemn gliders singularly for slavery or anything. I'm trying to condemn those fuck, you know, the crime is more despoiling the land. If you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, look, I'm going to be, I'm going to be blunt with you, dude. I think, I think it's, they should have sent them back. The second that they decided they were not gonna any longer be slaves, it shouldn't have been a debate of you know. The Civil War was too voting. late. They needed to send them back in the late 1700s. Right, but this debate about you know them voting and whatnot that shouldn't even have been a debate. The debate should have been a debate on should they be sent back or not. That should have been the, the like I'm talking about on the presidential campaigns because that's what I've been reading about in particular recently. Um. Just the different campaigns and um, what was the issue at hand for each one? What was the rhetoric 
what was the hot button issue, right? It should have been, and I'm and I know it sounds it sounds callous, I guess. I don't know. It should have been sending them back though. You know? X, yeah. It's popular. Everybody knows that. That's what Lincoln that was his ideal. He was a very idealistic person, obviously, but uh just unfortunate they couldn't fulfill his ideals. You, you know when when uh, Lincoln won the presidency, his speech uh, was uh, mainly damn near begging the southern states to not worry. Like he he was like throughout the entirety of his speech, he wanted to assure them that that the North was not going to aggress them, and that he was not they were not going to plan on taking their their way of life. But obviously, they didn't believe Wicked. him. Man. How how they much did. do you know about uh, the post Civil War and the Reconstruction period? Because that's very telling uh, about it's very relevant today. I mean, you see a lot of similarities in the Reconstruction efforts and then, yeah, uh, I, the lack of that, the vacuum of that. Yeah, I I I, I uh, read over something that was called I guess the Lost Cause, and I guess that was that that was kind of the idea that touched on, on what's going on right now actually the idea that um there really couldn't be any coexistence that, they spent um, 10 years just well, 10 whole years dedicated to reintegrating and rebuilding with uh, the sun men in mind it was not 10 years that's a long time for the federal government to be prioritizing something i think um you know i've done a lot of reading about the civil war I, i've you know i've read a lot and yeah um one thing that is always brought up by you know pro southern gliders is that you know it had nothing to do with slavery essentially there's the defense of the war right. that you know there was it was a state's rights thing and had nothing to mm -hmm. do with slavery nothing you know that i'm saying hasn't been said before but yeah um it seems like cope to me because yeah yeah, like it was very clearly about slavery, was, in my opinion, and slavery. Uh, it was about the state's rights to have slaves. Right, and um, like to say anything else about it yeah. is basically, in my opinion, Copium. the major tenet of the lost cause. Right, I mean, there's a lot of that gets said about that, and there's you know the fact of the matter is most people who were fighting for the South didn't own slaves, were not rich, right. you know, were drafted right. into it the is, army. It is technically correct to say it's a states right issue. Not right, the states' rights to have slaves. It was a slave. Brother, it was a slave. But the, I mean, there may have been other things in play the there. Point, but the, the, the primary point, debate that, in the public consciousness was this: was the slavery yeah. debate. The primary driver of this war was it, it, the, the, the 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 bigger issue than that because the Republicans were not pushing to abolish slavery; they were pushing aggressively to to uh, stop the expansion of it. They didn't want it in Nebraska and Kansas. They, they they wanted those to be free states. Um, and that was really what the, the issue that boiled over um because you know there was a pre-civil war, I guess, in uh Kansas and Nebraska. I'm not sure you're familiar with that, but um that was the really the issue right there. That that was really um the issue that led to actually, I don't know if you know this, but the Mexican American War. It it, it was um not not to say that Mexico was altru being altruistic, they had their reasons. But they were trying to push the tex the Texas gliders out of Texas, and the pretext they used for that was the slaves. Um, the gliders in Texas were bringing a lot of slaves with them, and the the hombritos started worrying about the influence the and the plotting of the gliders over there. So they used slavery as a pretext to kick them out, and you know that led to revolt and whatnot. Yeah, but, and, you know whatever it, it may have been. The smallest percentage of gliders that owned slaves, but like yeah. the it was a way of I, life. I don't, I don't see how you can divorce it from like the primary. No, it's you know, not about it's divorcing it. The point is the larger umbrella concept is state rights, which is relevant today. So again, if right. we have a civil yeah, war, it's going to be over that. That's same fair, issue. but that's state not. Rights, not they slavery. were very much concerned with one right in particular. Yeah. Slavery like, first, they write second. And and not to say that, you know, that there are not other, there's not other rights and things that were, you know, in question there and, and that kind of yeah. thing. But, like, to say that, like, <laughs> you know, putting the cart before the horse is what I feel like I'm trying to say here. That yeah. It feels like states' hoping. rights is kind of not what everybody was talking about. 
Yeah, no. It's, I mean, I, you, I was, you're right, but you have to have the context of slavery was uh, Britain had already outlawed it many, many decades earlier. So on a global scale, it wasn't as acceptable. So at that point in time, like, yeah, okay, slavery is not in vogue anymore. So you're right. Like, I, I'm more inclined to say it was totally about slavery because at that point it stuck out like most other countries like France or whatever they had stopped uh, industrial slavery. And, you know, this is all my opinion. I just, yeah, no, based I, on I, what I, I've seen. No, but I think it's, you're right, though. It, I think it's copium. Um that's what it feels like anyway, because I don't I don't understand how anyone could say it's, it wasn't about slavery. You know, there, there's a lot of um, documents that show it, you know, letters that were written and signed by different um, men of importance that are that are that we have that that was the issue being discussed. You know, you know, there was a, another party. It was such a slavery was such a hot topic issue, dude, that there was different parties being created from it. There was a party called the No the Free Soil Party, right? And to to the extent that former Democratic President Van Buren, he became a a Free Soil member, and he ran as he ran for president under that. And I think it was nineteen fifty six. I want to say he ran under the Free Soil Party. It was about slavery, dude. You know, I don't understand. You know, it's and it, it was about slavery, and it's okay that it was about slavery. It is what it is, right? Yeah, I mean, you know, like I've I've got the Declaration clauses of the you know seceding states pulled up, you know, for every state, and pretty much every one of them explicitly mentions slavery as being the cause of the the, the primary cause of the need to secede. Like, yeah. that seems like you know telling. Right. And then and then there was another party created, bro, called the Know Nothings. Like I know nothing. They're called the Know Nothing Party because they were campaigning, dude, while completely ignoring the issue of slavery. So people called them the Know Nothings because they everyone thought it was ridiculous that you would not address the issue that that was in, in everybody's mind, dude. To the point, bro, that when James Buchanan, right, won the presidency, right? In 1956, right? That's when he won as a Democrat. 18, yeah. He literally said, dude, I shit you not. That's the year, that's around the time when the Republicans were created, right? Because the Whig Party dissolved. Um, but he was quoted as saying the, the, the radical rhetoric from the Republicans is going to lead to civil war. Right. Yeah, for and sure. And, and it did. Yeah. Like, this is like... Um, both sides are at fault here, I think. And, you know, one for, you know, committing, you know, and, and abiding what, you know, no matter what we say here is, is still a moral wrong. I believe yeah, slavery yeah. Is, is not the right of course, course of action. Of course. And then the other side for, you know, stoking the flames until they erupt. Right. I mean, and, and maybe a lot, I guess a lot of them felt like they had to. Right. But yeah, this, this is, well, is what it is. My, my point in saying all of that is this, dude. And all my reading, right? Because I'm not reading about slavery. That's just it comes up regularly, right? I am amazed at the how conflicted the gliders were. They were fucking conflicted, dude. Um, and um, it, it's not like they were all like spitting on every summit they saw and like, you know, hanging them and left and right. I no. feel like I have to make it even more clear here. Like, I'm not discounting any other causes. Let me just be clear. I'm not discounting other causes of the war. What I am saying it's, is it's that I've heard many a glider say to my face, this war yeah, had no. nothing to do with slavery. Right. For sure. And that's For a fucking sure. ridiculous statement. I'm sure it's a complicated. I mean, obviously, it's complicated, right? But I think what you just said is a fact. Yeah. You know? it, it had a little bit to do with slavery. <laughs> just a tainty wincy bit, you know? But you know, but just, anyway, go ahead, sir. Yeah, all that all that shit led us to where we're at today. You know, twenty twenty uh four, and we're we have a, a campaign coming up, and we don't know what the fuck is gonna happen because crime is out of fucking control. We have a fucking open border. Who the fuck knows what's gonna happen, dude? You know, and I and I and I'm not a I'm not I don't think I'm a conservative, dude. I don't think Trump is gonna save us. 
How the fuck is Trump going to save us? Trump, yeah, Trump's not going to save us. I don't. Nobody's going to save us. It's, I don't think there's nobody in the running that. No, it's all and, a fucking mess. I mean, who who could who could save us? Like, who could be in the running? I don't know. I don't know that anybody could. Jesus Christ could be in the running, and I don't think he could <laughs> fucking save us. It, I, 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 it's since just, 9/11, it's been it's been a wrap. Probably it's a shame, so. man. But like I said, man, one day at a time, right? <laughs> but look, look, I, I enjoy all this discourse, you know, and um, there's not many people that could stomach it, right? Because what we do here is very fucking gruesome, dude. So I salute you guys and everyone in the Ag Nation, but you have, I salute you, bro, in Seattle, because um, you guys are here regularly, man, and this is not, this is not, this is serious shit, dude. Yeah, well, you know, once I uh, found some people that actually shared this point of view, it became kind of, um, it's like uh, a little it's bit of a cathartic. release. cathartic. Yes, there, that's yeah. the word. Well, well look, dude, um, I don't know many people that can stomach seeing time and time and time again innocent people driving, getting cut off and gunned down by someone that never even fucking laid eyes on them willy nilly and still keep keep going and you know consuming that and processing it dissecting it not many people that i know could do that dude that's tough right to do. that kind of thing seems to be the primary injustice in the country right now yeah and, and like the piggyback off of that is that think about how many more people thinks like us but aren't don't have an outlet or don't have people that they can talk to for real press yeah. that but uh, to touch on like all the murders and all the carnage, I see it every day, nonstop. And yeah. it's like, I'm numb to it now. But to yeah, see been... other people basically act like this is just brand new. Like, oh, this is the first time that it's ever happened. It kind of gets to you a little bit. And then, you know, I got to kind of take mental breaks, you know, take some time off just to kind of recoup, just to deal with it again. Yeah. No, you're right, dude. Um, but you almost have to, like, doing what you do, right, and seeing what you see. You kind of have to cope, like, you have to like um process it in a healthy manner, you know. That should get to you if you let it, you know. Yeah, yeah, definitely will. Like, I mean, especially when it comes to the kids, like, you know. Like, Hell yeah. I I have kids, so like that that. That's that's what really kind of like gets me anytime, like as far as emotions. But I have to hold it in, and I have to like wait till I get back to the car, or I gotta find a bathroom real quick to run into. Because if somebody see you crying, they be like, "Oh, well, he needs to be taken off the force." You know what I mean? Like it's, it's just so oblivious to the actual human emotion that's right. still behind behind all of that. Like, you know, I look at these these people, kids, as if they were my own. You know, I don't give right. a damn. You know that, where that's they how came it should from. Be, brother. That's how it should be, brother. I hate, I hate the, brother, I love the way you just said, man. I hate people that, it doesn't have to be my kid that catches a straight bullet in the living room for me to fucking feel it. You know? Yeah. And I hate people that don't, don't understand that. You know, that, that, that they're part of the fucking problem if you ask me, dude. Yeah, they definitely are. And, and, and the thing is, too, is that when these kids die, out, out here in the community, like the community doesn't stop. It's no protest. It's no right. march. I seen one person, I don't know who they were, but they made like a poster of just all the kids that were killed in the area. Like they did it, they did it on this like fence that a construction fence. And they lined that thing up with their names and their date of birth. But that thing got taken down real quick. You know? Yeah. Sure. Meanwhile, so credit get killed like they they burning down they burning down the Wendy's they they blocking off the road, you right. know, and and it stayed blocked off until a little girl gets killed. And yet, if it wasn't for Officer B Tatum, right, you know, that that mom's family never would have got no donation monies. You know, it was Officer mm. uh, B Tatum's uh, YouTube subscribers that donated almost over two hundred something thousand. I think it was like two hundred eighty thousand dollars to the to the uh, mom. Of the little eight-year-old girl that was killed in Atlanta during that protesting at the Wendy's. So right. it's crazy to see that, hey, the own community out here really ain't even stopping or speaking out 
for the children. Man, no solution, bro. We got some more uh, antebellum stuff coming up here. Fuck. Glad to have you back. Man. Wow. That was a history lesson, man. Yeah, we were boring everyone to death, I think. Yeah, my fault. Yo, I'm, we're just keeping it real as fuck, Chief. Where was the light, Chief? Where the fuck was the light, man? No, nah, no, nah, that was that was that was deep. I mean, I, I feel like the reason that gliders don't southern gliders and you know I am a southern glider, by the way. Like no, the, the <laughs> ones the ones that um the ones that um are into the Confederacy and all that stuff and the South will rise again, they don't they don't want to be attached to slavery in any way. So by saying that the Civil War wasn't about slavery is divorcing themselves completely from it. Because yeah, that's sort of though, the subtext. Yeah, so they just they just cutting ties with it, and they know that that shit was about slavery. But it's just they're just divorcing themselves from it, man. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, everything I said was true, though, man. Like, um, from what from 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 what I know, you know, what I'm saying, like, I think a lot of black people say that too. That it wasn't about because they need the victimhood. So if if, if there was a war fought yeah. with six hundred thousand. White men died. I mean, and those horrible deaths, like that that mini ball that they were shooting out those guns, that wasn't like bullets today that just pierce you and, you know, sometimes go through you and sometimes just get lodged in you. Mm. The mini ball was literally like a big, thick ball of iron. And when it hits you, man, it caused so much damage. Um yeah, so um, all those gliders that got their legs amputated with no anesthesia, just so they could survive getting shot with those mini balls. Um, hundreds of thousands of gliders got their legs cut off with no anesthesia. Um, yeah, man. Um, and and I can just and you know like. You could just imagine, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm looking at a picture of a gunshot fracture of the left femur by mini A ball, and it looks like popcorn. Yeah. The bone. Exactly. It 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 didn't it was a different bullet and it spiraled. It was a groove inside of those old pistols. And the mini ball had a groove on it. So it and I mean it whipped it at you. And when it hit you, man, anywhere. You were fucked. Like if it just hits you in your arm, like the damage. If your arm didn't get cut off, it would get gangrene. You would die. So anywhere it hit you, you had to go under the knife. And they sawed it off with a saw. And there was no anesthesia common back then. Or you had to sit there and with a with a piece of wood between your teeth and get through it. Well, they used the saw that had a hundred other dudes' blood and pus on it. Not even alcohol. Right. Yeah, they gave us some alcohol, but alcohol makes you bleed more. So it's mm. like if you were lucky to have alcohol, but alcohol makes you bleed more. And um, it's like the guys who did that, think about them. Like you're talking about what cops think. Think about the guys, the Civil War um, um, doctors that got a line full of motherfuckers. There's 30 motherfuckers waiting in line to get their fucking limbs cut off. And you're the one doing it with a fucking saw. Salute to um listen man um this is the introduction to Negroes in Negro Land. The compiler of this volume deems it proper to protest here at the very outset of his undertaking against the unjust and ill boding practice of indiscriminately stigmatizing as a traitor almost every man, whether in the north or in the south, in the east or in the west who in the exercise of his constitutional rights and honest convictions raises his voice in opposition to the revolutionary and destructive measures of the party now dominant in our national legislature. More than sufficient. The party has since the termination of war viciously and unpardonably abandoned the old landmarks of just and sacred fealty to race. And it is now advocating what means the prostitution and bulk of a great and good white integer to the small and bad black fraction. The policy of the radical, not the Republican Party, 
if carried out to its logical ends, will inevitably result in the forced political, religious, civil, and social equality of white and black races. And the direful sequence of that result, so flagrantly unnatural and wrong in itself, can only be reasonably looked for in the ultimate degradation, division, and destruction of the republic. It is in the sincere hope of lessening at least some of the dangers of the shocking and widespread calamities thus alluded to that this compilation is offered to an intelligent and indiscriminate discriminate public. So he's, they're talking about what to do with the Negro after slavery. Yeah, how are now, they going to betray their glider kinsmen down there, you know, by putting them on the same level, right? Exactly, exactly. Um, Even though we it, didn't said, do anything. They said that it would, be, it would destroy the country if, if you put blacks equal whites. There are now in the United States of America 30 millions of white people who are bound together by the ties of a kindred origin by the affinities of a sameness of noble purpose, by the links of a common nationality, and by the cords of an inseparable destiny. We have here also, unfortunately for us all, four millions of Black people whose ancestors like themselves were never known except in very rare instances which form the exception to a general rule to aspire to any other condition than that of based and beast-like slavery. These black people are by nature of an exceedingly low and groveling disposition. They have no trait of character that is lovely or admirable. They are not high-minded enterprising nor prudent in no age in no part of the world have they of themselves ever projected or advanced any public or private interest nor given expression to any thought or sentiment that could worthily elicit the praise or even the favorable mention of the better portion of mankind Seeing then that the Negro does indeed belong to a lower and inferior order of being, why in the name of heaven, why should we forever degrade and disgrace both ourselves and our posterity by entering of our own volition into more intimate relations with them? So it's like this is this is written in like after slavery, like the, the 1970s or 1870s, when this guy wrote this book about um Negroes and Negro Land. Who's the author? Um uh, it's a compilation. Uh this guy but, who's who's doing the yeah. forward, I think Hinton Rowan Helper. Okay. Yeah, and he's talking about like black people like dogs here, okay? He's saying like He's trying, but he's the reason he's talking about them like dogs is because he's trying to get rid of them. His goal was to get us sent back, all of us, to have the government send all of us back to Africa, every single one of us. So that's why he's talking so, um, what do you call it, like uh, discriminatory. Right, like and he's... this is a very common mindset at the time. To be an abolitionist does not mean that you necessarily were in favor of equality and, and, and no. all this stuff. I mean, many, many abolitionists just wanted them to go. Exactly, exactly. And 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 that's that right there is what you guys said earlier. Like there was there was a big push to send every single one of us back. He said, May God in his restraining mercy forbid that we should ever do this most foul or wicked thing. Acting under the influence of that vile spirit of deception and chicanery, which is always familiar with every false pretense, the members of a radical Congress, the editors of a venal press, and other peddlers of perverted knowledge 
are now loudly proclaiming that nowhere in our country, henceforth, must there be any distinction, any discrimination on account of color, thereby covertly inculcating the gross error of inferring or supposing that color is the only difference. Damn. That a very trivial difference between the whites and the blacks. So they were trying to say, look, man, it's not just color. We were different in more ways than just color, man. Um, Because that was the sentiment after um, slavery to just fully immerse black people into the culture, and which was what they did, but it took a lot longer because of Jim Crow and all that stuff. But they, 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 they planned on doing what happened in the 60s in the 1870s. But um, it got derailed by like a, a hundred years because of Jim Crow and all that other stuff um, that, you know, um, kind of um, pushed it back. But um, yeah, and um, it says, now once for all in conscientious difference to truth, let it be distinctly made known and acknowledged that in addition to the black and baneful color of the Negro, there are numerous other defects, physical, mental, and moral, which clearly mark him when compared with the white man as a very different and inferior creature. While therefore with an involuntary repugnance, which we cannot control, and with a wholesome antipathy, which it would be both unnatural and unveiling in us to attempt to destroy, we behold the crime-stained blackness of the Negro. Let That's what we do also, here. Let us also, me, uh, at the uh, same quick. time, take cognizance. Go ahead. You know, we could take turns. It could be like a, like the school classroom, you know? You could just pass. And then the next person in the panel got to read. <laughs> and talking about reading? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Mr. Helper definitely had a dim view of the Negro. <laughs> yeah, it says... It says Make no buts about it. Says, it. At the I don't think time, I can read this, though. I'd definitely get fired. It says, take cognizance. Yeah, I mean, listen, man. I mean... You know, I, I had to read as a kid, man. My mother was being an author, man. I had to read all the time as a kid, man. You know what I'm saying? Stuff like that, man. So, like, in class, I would read, like, slow so I'd fit in with the sun, man. But I could always read, man. read <laughs> slow, fit in. Yeah, man. You can't be answering questions around sun, man. You can't be looking smart around sun, man. That shit is a fact, man. That shit ain't no fucking uh, wise tale, man. But and you had to like children dumb children. it down. It's not like yeah, a lot of everybody it. did though. Like I told you from Watch DC, everybody did, man. All the a lot of them kids had um mothers that worked in the government making hundreds of thousands of dollars, mothers working for congressmen, mothers working for people and shit like that, and senators and shit. And they them niggas doing 20 years in prison or life. Um yeah. I, I, I had someone, a son man, try to pick on me because I had a Harry Potter book in class. Yeah. Meanwhile, he's saying the cat c -c -c can. Right. <laughs> Damn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. Um. Yeah. Um. It says also at the same time take cognizance of his lowly compressed forehead. I don't know if that time they knew that that was the um, frontal lobe. I don't know if, where, where the science was at that time. But they noticed that we had a compressed forehead, whereas um, gliders have big foreheads. Their foreheads bulge out. That's why their face go down like this, and our face go like this. It's I also hard. Think, uh gliders get migraines that's mm. like in their frontal frontal lobe yeah and um yeah all this stuff is just is is is, is it is it, it, it's, it's um you can't mistake in this stuff man like you can go through the world just looking at 
the different races, even if you add in on Britos and and tigers, we're all mad different. Um, more than skin color, man. Um, it says his hard, thick skull. That yeah, um, yeah, harder skulls. Um, his small, backward thrown brain. What he calls the backward thrown brain is that a lot of a lot of our the bigger parts in our brain are in the back where you have like the medulla and glada and all that stuff and the smaller parts in the front we had like the frontal lobe and things like that um it's it's um it is what it is man um his short crisp hair of course his flat nose his thick lips and none of this stuff offends me thinking about like because like that that's literally the description that's how black people look I ain't offended by none. Of it. I'm offended by everything else he said before this, but these descriptions right here, <laughs> I ain't offended real, by that. uh, That's just how we look. You know what I'm saying? That's just how we look. God damn, I mean, I'm not talk- yeah, I'm not talking about mulattoes and motherfucking goddamn um, Beyonce and shit. Like, I'm talking about the type of niggas they was taking off of those slave ships. Fresh off the boat. Yeah, those people look like this. No, no chasing? Yeah. They look like this, man. Um, his projecting snout like mouth. That's prognathism. He just, you know what I'm saying? Um, but he's talking about these things being bad things and compared to gliders. And it just is that's just the way we look. Now it has effects. Cactus it does have legs. Yeah, yo, dude, before I um got older and high blood pressure, I could put my whole Oh, finger around. I could touch my thumb and touch my um, middle finger around my ankle. Look at some in that time. I've seen a wide time. array, but I guess most of them have pretty, pretty small calves. Most people next, in general have small calves. Nah, gliders got cankles, man. A lot of glider women and glider men they have cankles. They, their legs, their their, their calf and their short, ankle. Shorter people, I think. Nah, just glad as a general, man. If you got to look, you you never notice, so you can't really say that because you probably haven't been looking. But if you look, now when you look, glad, sun men got skinny legs. That's why they always say sun men be skipping leg, look, leg day. Or it, we don't. We just have, that's just the way our legs look. Um, gliders have stout ankles. Their ankle and their calf is really, you can't, it's not, it's not like, it's look like the same muscle. Sun men from the calf into the ankle. That shit look like a baseball bat. Um, and that's that's why we run faster. That's why we okay, um okay. you know. Um it says his strange unique toned voice. <laughs> what does that mean? I don't know how unique sound, but unix um I don't. I don't know how Unix sound. Maybe that's how Unix. I think some men got a lot of bass in their voice. That's what. Yeah, that's that one what, doesn't seem right to me. Yeah, that's that's what. Um, and maybe he's talking about East Africans because I know East Africans. So hey, they sound kind of sound like Indians a little bit, but um, West Africans, man, we got deep voices, man. Um, it said the scantiness of beard on his face. Hmm. Mm. The toughness and unsensitiveness of his skin, the thinness and shrunkenness of his thighs, the curved knees, the calfless legs, the low short ankles, his long flat heels, his glut shaped feet, the general angularity and oddity of his frame. I think what he's talking about is our long limbs. We got longer limbs. <laughs> you know, I boots. believe Mr. Helper may have attended a slave auction or two. Yeah, yeah. Gliders yeah. got uh, big torsos. Yeah, some men, some men got got long, longer limb to um trunk ratio, man. Um, like for instance, me, I have a seven foot wingspan and I'm six three. What the you know fuck? What I'm saying? Yeah. You should and be it's, in it's, the it's NBA. A, 
It's a lot of some. Well, I mean, you got to be a good. It's a lot of some in with that. Allen Iverson, a lot of that's not that's that's put like this. It's not common, but it's uh, some men can could have long. They want like some like six eight. You post to your wingspan supposed to be you see your height, but a lot of some men got longer than average. Like, like if you ever watch a boxing match, right? If it's a white, if it's a black guy versus a, another race, like a Mexican or a white guy, look at the reach. When they say when they do the tail of the tape and they do reach, look at the black guy's reach is always much longer than the other person's reach. Yeah, um, Kevin Durant is six eleven, six nine, but his um, wingspan is like seven, seven five, seven four. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'd say Katie's closer to seven foot, but yeah. Yeah, he's about six eleven, something like that. But yeah, it's 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 like, it's like we we that's just that's just how it is. We got longer arms and longer legs. And about um, the the legs, the the uh, the the thin legs. When you look at Anderson Silva or uh, John Jones, they both have uh, thin legs, right? And they are not heavyweights. But when you even look at the heavyweights like Derek Lewis, he's so much bigger th- looking than um, John Jones and. Uh, Anderson Silva, but they, but he also have have this uh, skinny uh, skinny legs. Look at Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson legs. The next time you watch a Tyson fight, look how skinny his legs are. Look at any basketball game. Look at the brothers. Look how skinny their legs are. They, 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 uh, you know what I'm saying? Like it, it's like literally, you can do like this on your ankle. Um, most of them, most of them, you know what I'm saying, because they're in shape, so they're not like they don't have like high blood pressure, they have edema and all that stuff. They got, you know, what I mean, um, so uh, it said the the malo the malodorous exaltations from his person. See right there, that's offensive because gliders. You want you calling somebody? We both funky? think that you know, we both think each other smell like <laughs> shit. All right, we're just gonna have to get over that. <laughs> You know what? But we smell like must. Our smell is more. Y'all smell different take... to us. Oh yeah, I got it to you. But to me, some men smell like must, so they're musty when they stink. When gliders stink, you have two smells from gliders. You have the the the, the hot dog, wet dog. <laughs> but then then when they get like rank, then guys, some gliders can get ranked the way they smell like old cheese. Then um. And um, that one right there, I had a roommate in college who smelled like that. And I had a roommate at the Quaker school that smelled like that. Like, and I do, that's your roommate. You stuck with that person. Yeah, I don't know. Um, smelled like cheese. And both of them were rot. One was um, goth. The one in college was goth. And the other one in, in high, high school, he was, um, he was um, like grunge or something like that. But I mean, never showered, never thought about showering. Had girlfriends and everything. I'm telling these guys, it wasn't like these guys wasn't fucking. They had girlfriends, and um, smelled like cheese, old cheese. And I never really <laughs> smelled some men sound like that. Some men kind of be, some men be musty, more so. You know what I'm saying? Um, where it's like a smell of like, um, I can't really explain it, but it's like. Just the smell of like, um, it's hard to explain the sun man smell, but because it don't smell like no food or nothing like that, it just smells like must. Um, uh, uh, I said the perulity of his, I don't know what perulity means. That's crazy. That's the first word I didn't know what mean. Yeah, I'm perulity. lost on that one actually. Uh, purality, purality. Oh, pur- purality. Yeah. I also don't know what it means. Uh, yeah. he's stupid. Okay, <laughs> the inertia, is, but you know, this one right here, his inertia and sleepyheadness. One thing they didn't know about black people back then was diabetes, so diabetes wasn't like a thing, it wasn't um coined or as a what you call it diagnosed. So, black people, a lot of slaves would that were diabetic would just seem lazy. You would seem like you were lazy. White people didn't understand that. They just like yo, genetic. Well, diabetes, yeah, diabetes is is is, is pr- pr- prone. Sugar, um, um, sugar diabetes and 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 um, salt, um, high blood pressure, things like that. 
those things make some men um unable to it, it messes up your wind and your and your ability to exit to work. So a lot of some men were deemed lazy and idle, but they really just had high blood pressure, they had um diabetes, and you was just lazy and they kill your ass or whip them. Yo, whip Wouldn't that mean kill you. they were eating pretty good? Well, you got to understand, too, the Sun Man died in Africa that we evolved in over centuries. We didn't have no salt. Sun Men didn't use salt in the in, um, okay, for, okay. millennia. So they were like, salt is like our liquor. How liquor is with Native Americans, salt is that to us. Like, once we get the taste of salt, we are addicted to it. Look at all yeah. Sun Foods. Even those you on the coastlines, no salt. No, but that's that. That's because the salt was readily available, and it was, and we had the easiest access to it. And when people enslaved us, they made us work in salt mines. But us in our own villages, in our own societies, we didn't use salt. So did you got did y'all eat raw meat? Um, smoked meat and cooked and something and 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 also you know cooked food, but you didn't use salt like some men didn't use sun-dried, sun-dried, yes. But yeah. you preserve the meat without the salt. Yeah, we didn't, we didn't, we didn't know that salt was a preservative. We never, we never used salt as a preservative. We only. Hey, I'm, I'm wondering input. what impact that might have had. That's. I did an episode on that where the the glider went over there to that tribe in Africa that. You know, eat all the strange stuff, and they ate the goat alive and everything. And they was making yeah, yeah. this little season and this little whatever it was. Mosquito cookies. Let's talk about yeah, that the sometime. Too. About the the food that affects people, not just some men. Yeah, some men. Eating. Some men is addicted not, to salt. No, not just salt. Like for example, people who eat uh, seafoods, like. Um, Shrimps and lobsters and mussels and clams, those things are disgusting, at least to me. But people are, are eating those things. Oysters. Yeah, those gliders are- can eat raw oysters. I've seen gliders yeah. eat like 36 raw oysters in a row. And you're like, what the fuck, yo? And they're just knocking them down. But that's that's gliders. They they, they, they have a different palate. Um, that's like equivalent to dumps. Dumpster and landfill divers here in the Philippines. <laughs> I, I could that. Like that. I thought some people <laughs> loved crab and stuff like that. We like crabs. We like crabs. You know why? Because of the old bay. Give us some man some crabs without no old bay seasoning. Mm. We like the crabs old and bay. Hot sauce is the it's the old bay, man. The old bay is what draws us to the crabs because that's salt. If you look at every sun man. Food, everything they call a sun man food. It, what do sun men make fun of gliders about in America? Like that they the don't seasoning. season their food because we it's hard to season. Too bland, yes, too bland. They're saying it's too bland. They yeah. eat tasteless foods. Yeah, we over season our food. Now gliders evolved with salt, so the salt is not. They don't get addicted to salt. Now, if a glider eats too much salt, yeah, he's gonna get high blood pressure, but they're less likely to get it because they don't, it's just the same thing with Native Americans and liquor. They didn't evolve with the ethyl, I think the ethanol liquor or whatever it is. They had their own drinks, but it wasn't the um liquor, the spirit that they 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 never they never evolved with that. So they never knew how to digest it. And um, so when they get drunk, they get drunk, drunk, like a a, a ombrito's drunk is way different than your drunk. He's fucked up. He'll think he can drive. Like, you'll be so drunk you can't even walk. His ass will be driving down the street. I was just thinking that, too. <laughs> Seen the body cam footage of some fucking blasted on burritos. Oh, my God. Yeah. He'll be driving in a, when you're in a state where you can't pick your head up. Like they fall asleep at the wheel, cause a backup for ten miles. The cop wakes them up, and they're like, "Back, like everything's yeah. cool, no problem." Yeah, but this guy was trying to get. He was he was trying to get Sunmen evicted. He he was he was this guy who wrote Negroes who wrote the forward the Negroes Negro Land. 
his own. His he was goal. embellishing. Yeah. And, and But look at this, though. But everything in this part is right. Everything in this part is, is 100% right. It said the um the proverbial dishonesty. And who's known for doing the most lying? Let's just talk about it. What do we talk about every day? Just some true. fucking... No, no. Some people... Some fucking... Ain't shit the... Yeah, yeah, like what you said, uh, KB, the embellishment, because sometimes you, you don't need to, to think deep if uh, what you're saying is true, right? So, Well, he has a political objective, so that explains why he's going to really play and, it up and ham up. And that's connected uh, to, what, uh, to what Axe said uh, earlier. When they have uh, this diabetes and then the masters don't know what that is, uh, they, they call uh, the some man uh, lazy. So... That's why it's connected to this uh, proverbial uh, dishonesty. Sometimes they could be honest, they're not feeling well, but they get whipped because uh, they are branded as uh, uh, lazy. Because you can't understand, you can't believe that this guy who who hasn't really worked half a day is that tired. Um, Yeah, but also some men are dishonest because it doesn't matter. You got to understand too, like, the truth doesn't really matter in the sun man mind. Like if, if you, if you got like, for instance, look at the stories we do whenever they talk to black people, now they talk to liberal white liberals, white liberals do a lot of lying too, but you can tell that there's some turmoil. When you hear white, when we hear these white liberals talking on these stories, you can see the turmoil where they're trying to fight with the truth. When sun men say it, they just spit it out. There's no fight with it. They just freely say, yeah, Pookie, who been terrorized the community all, all the last 10 years, he was funny. He was the greatest person to ever live. Da, 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 da. You know what I'm saying? Hey, Pookie. Um, yeah. Oh, uh, man, the police is killing us. They're in a neighborhood where 70 people have been killed in one year. Literally, like Longdale or Austin or Walnut Park in in 